Tonight, Rock in the Fast Lane sits down with my good friend and uh, kind of like a partner in crime, so to speak, uh, Jeff Westlake. Tonight, we're going to talk about Jeff's uh, brand new album, In the Key of Blue, which which kind of takes us to, you know, a little different side of Jeff. I mean, he's he comes from the metal angle, metal side, um, and me personally, I think he's a great guitarist. He's he's a guy that uh, uh, total pro, excellent musician. And in the key of blue is a you know like I said a different side, but it's also a uh, it's an album that, that that expresses a lot of different feelings and a lot of different sides of Jeff and and we're going to talk about that tonight. So uh, let me introduce Jeff Westlake, my good friend. And uh, how you doing tonight, bud? I'm doing great, John. Doing great. Uh, thanks for the kind words. I appreciate it. No problem. It's always a great time to talk to you, even though we talk a lot. We never really get to sit down and and discuss. Uh, you know, some of the projects that you're doing, I mean, in depth, so. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The many projects. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> well, anyway, with, uh, you know, with In the Key of Blue, you know, I, I was listening to this as you were recording, you know, getting to go through the recording process with you, you know, so to speak, and it was, uh, it was interesting. You get to, you sent me a lot of, you know, different sound clips and, different things that you did in a studio. But one thing, I mean, I know, I know personally, you know, the angle that you came from to write this album, but for the people that, you know, that are listening in and haven't had a chance to, uh, you know, to find that, you know, inside scoop, what made you decide to do that? I mean, go from, you know, hydrogen and, you know, some of the heavier side, the metal side, and, and jump into this uh, blues album, which, which I think is excellent. Well, that, 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 the hundred percent of that credit to get me to, to do this at all in the first place goes to Terry Whitford. Um, I was, uh, um, in the process of going through a, a really ugly divorce. Um, and Terry had come up to my house one night, late in the evening. It was in October. So it, was, it already started getting dark a little bit early. And he came up and it was just getting dark. And, you know, he said, Hey, I got something I want to talk to you about. And I said, Yeah. And I'd gone to him a few months earlier and said, hey, I want you to produce a song for me. And he said, Okay, no problem. And um, he said, But I get to choose the genre. And I said, That's fine too. And so I guess he'd had time to think about it. And he came up to the house, rolled up on his motorcycle, and said, Hey, let's do a blues record. And, I, you know, we talked about it for a couple of hours, actually. Right. And uh, I told him, I said, I tell you what, I don't know so much about a blues record. You know, I'm not talking, you know, I, I, I in no way want to do 12 bar blues. I didn't want to reinvent BB King um, right. or anything like that. I said, but let's, let's do a song and let's see how it works. And he said, okay. And so we did a song. And at the end of that song, in our process, we just kind of looked at each other and was like, wow. I mean, it was. To me, it was completely magical. It was something that I've never done before in the past. I didn't sit down and plan anything out. I had, you know, there was a song. It was actually, it's a, it's a song that Glenn, uh, Glenn used. And uh, I can't remember the guy's first name. I think his last name's Erickson had written uh, back in the, back some time ago, called So Much Love to Give. And I wanted to do that song because it just resonated with me. Right. And so we went in and did the song. And wow, man, you know, I brought in some old friends that I hadn't played with in like almost 20 years to do this. And, and it was just such a, um, such a pleasing moment for me just emotionally and, and internally after doing the song and seeing how it went that I told Terry, I said, okay, let's go ahead with it. And so there we went, man, from that point on, we took off. And, and, and this album really, uh, you know, for anybody who hasn't had a chance to listen to it, it 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 brings across, like I said in the beginning, so many different sides of of what you're about, and and it touches, you know, not only like the heavier blue side, but but there's so many different artists that you that you were uh, using as influences, influences through your life, like you know Dave Menachetti, Gary Moore, and I know we talked about this earlier. Is uh, you know Gary Moore was you know a major influence in this album and i think you you really did a nice job in capturing 
you know, kind of like what his feeling, but it also incorporated what you're about as well as Gary's feeling. And, and I think that's one of the things that really stands out about this album. Well, uh, again, thank you. I mean, sure. thank you so much. Um, when we set out and once we, once we did so much love, um, Terry and I actually had a conversation and I remember the conversation very well sitting in the control room at the studio about what this album needed to be, what, what I needed to accomplish with this record. And Gary Moore's name kept coming up because as, as you know, as much as there's great players out there and there's players out there that all evoke one thing or another in their playing with people who listen Gary Moore was the player who just, man, if, if it was time in that song to cry, he could make you cry. Right. If it was time to smile, he could make you smile. I mean, you know, and he just evoked all the right emotion in his playing. And from a lot of those players, I come from the same kind of background. And, you know, back in the day, man, you know, it was speed. Uh, 82, right. 83, yeah, I think it was, maybe 83, 84. Um, you know, the market, we knew Shanker who, in my book, Michael Shanker is the greatest lead guitarist that ever lived. Right. Um, uh, just because of his ability to evoke all those things in a rock genre, but if, you know, if you've never heard any of his, his acoustic stuff and stuff like that, you're missing out. But we're not talking about Michael. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, but Michael Shanker and, and uh, a lot of other players out there that just really did, you know, did their thing with speed, but then this guy named Eve Matt out and then the speed just took off i mean it just it went through the stratosphere and i was one of those guys i was a kid at that time i'm like oh let me have some of that right right you know? and and uh so you know and then that's kind of the, the, the form that it went into and gary moore was like that too gary gary had his form back then too with lizzie and and uh his early solo stuff you know victims of the future and dirty fingers and, and all those right. albums that he did that were just incredible Agreed. Um, you know, and, and so as you go through time, though, you start understanding certain things about music and music is nothing more than selling emotions and why fast is good in the right places. Um, fast doesn't always get what you want. And right. and then all of a sudden Gary Moore changed gears. And when he changed gears, I remember when he first changed gears. I was like, ah, what is he doing that for? And I kind of ignored it for a few years, to be honest. And, and then when I revisited him, I was like, oh, my God, listen to that, you know, still got the blues and all these other songs. I'm just like, man. And I noticed immediately he's he's gone from playing, you know, and of course, I'm being completely embellishing here. He's going from playing a million notes a second to a quarter of a million. Right. But right. but it's evoking the right things. Matter of fact, it's evoking more now than it ever did before. And so. You know, when we were doing the album, we, we talked about that, and we talked about Gary Moore, and I just, I felt, I felt that, I, I you know, there's going to be people go, oh, you went and ripped off what he was doing. Well, yeah, I guess I did, because it's really damn good. Right. And, <laughs> and it fit my, yeah, <laughs> and it fit my style. It fit what I wanted to do. It happened so naturally, and Terry would even tell you that from producing the album, that he told me, he said, I'm quite amazed at how much, how fast this fell together. I thought I'd have more of a battle out of you than this. And I said, you know, I thought you would too. <laughs> but, yeah, but it ended up going that way, you know. And then, and then I want to, I want to mention another cat that you mentioned. You know, there's a lot of great players. My influence comes from a lot of people. Nugent, Iommi, right. um, you know, Ace Frehley from Kiss because, while Ace isn't, you know, the note player that some of these other guys are, man, back in the 70s, those first six Kiss albums, he couldn't miss on a phrasing. I mean, it was just ridiculously good. Right. Agreed. And, and um, you know, so he was an influence. And, and, and let's come to a guy that only gets talked about in certain circles, but it is just monstrous. And that's Dave Minichetti. Um, Dave Minichetti from Y&T. You know, a lot of people go, oh, summertime girls. Oh, wipe my butt with that. Right. I mean... You know, because Y and T is I believe in you, open fire, mean streak, um, rock and roll's gonna save the world. Uh, right. don't stop you know, don't stop running and I mean there's so many songs that you could go on, but the soul that that guy has and the soul that he put into Y and T, which is a hard rock band, but man, if you heard his couple blues releases, whoa. Incredible. Whoa, whoa. You Incredible. know, so 
So I, I kind of I pulled from that. I, I went back and listened to it because I've got those, and, and and I pulled out some Gary Moore, and and I pulled out some Kenny Wayne Shepherd, and I pulled out some Stevie Ray Vaughan, and I pulled out some old Richie Blackmore, early Deep Purple, before Ian Gill and some of the blues that they jammed on back in the day. Um, you know, listen to some Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin and some of the stuff that Zeppelin did in the early days and stuff like that. So, I, you know, I went back to work, but the influence of it all comes back to Gary Moore because I think to this day, God rest his soul, he's the best blues player I've ever heard. I agree with you. I mean, he... he... I remember the first time that I heard him, I had a, a friend named Jack Heckman, and uh, he's the one that introduced me. I, I, I heard him play in, uh, you know, like some of the older stuff, you know, from, you know, back in the early 80s. And I said, well, who is this? And and, yeah. and I was just a fan ever since. I mean, the guy could just, like you said, hit all the notes and, and bring a ton of feeling. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I kind of, you know, bring you're in the key of blue album you know and 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 it makes me think a lot of gary moore and i know if, if it's if it evokes a uh you know a feeling you know to you know to me as a fan as a listener and even if it's just that one little note that makes it happen or or one song that makes it happen you know in my eyes you've succeeded mm. well that right er everything you just said just made the whole thing worth it to me. I mean, because, you know, to, to, to even slightly, I mean, if I could even be put in the running for carrying Gary Moore's guitar strap, I'd be, I'd be a tickled person, you know? And, and to think that anything that I've done on, a, on six strings on a piece of wood could match what that guy's done. And it, even, even if it's just for a fleeting second, man, that's just, that's honor beyond honor. And really, like we've like we've said, you know, I've told you, you know, numerous times, you know, as as this was, you know, being written and coming out, um, you know, it this is your in my eyes, this is your best playing. I mean, this really, really, I mean, you could tell it's coming from your heart. It it, it brings so many different sides of what you're about, you know, the heavy side. But I think this really, you know, puts you in that spotlight, which you know. I think you deserve to be, and I think you're one of the players, and, and there's numerous players out there that just do not get the credit that they deserve because they're not heard. Um, you know, people in in music, and, and especially like in the, in the hard rock and metal genre, they, for some reason, it seems like they're afraid to to stretch a little bit. You have the guys yeah. that like the, the melodic metal, you have guys that, that like the thrash metal, they like the power metal. And they don't listen to anything else. They don't open up to, you know, a Dave Menachetti doing a blues album or Gary Moore doing a blues album or, or Jeff Westlake doing a blues album. Well, you should really open up to it because it's it's um, those guys, you know, Dave and Gary and, my goodness, all the other people. I owe me on the Seven Star album, you know, with Glenn Hughes. That album was a lot of blues. Agreed. And, you know, um, and, you know, some of the other people throughout the years who have, who have tackled it. I mean, you know, Ace Fraley on his last solo album brought in Paul Stanley and did that old song of Freeze, which is kind of a blues tune. Right. And, and, you know, um, but there's so much, there's so, you know, hey, I, I'm a skeptic. I was, you know, I was one of those people that for years is like, oh my gosh, man, the only thing I want to hear about 12 bars is like a good food run or something. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not playing twelve bars of blues, and that's the way I was. Right. And and you know, and then all of a sudden, everything changed when Terry came to me, and we started talking about it. And and Terry and I have always had a great rapport together. We met back in '98, and we've had a great rapport ever since then. And then when Hydrogen started, and I was on the road all the time, we didn't see each other. We went our separate ways, just because that's just the way it was. And right. And, and now we're back together and, and, you know, we're already halfway done with the second album. Um, and we're getting ready here in a couple of weeks to do the, the basic tracking for the other part of the album. Uh, just finished shooting videos for the first record. Those videos will be coming out here pretty soon. But, you know, Terry, Terry and I have always had that rapport. And, and hey, if it wasn't for Terry Withrow saying, let's try this, who knows what would have happened. 
Right. It's just it, it's like people come into your life at at just the time you need them. I mean, absolutely. And and he really he really brought you know a, a, you know a lot of different aspects out in this album. I mean. You know, just looking at some of the tracks, I mean, I, you know, I thought about, you know, something a little different too was like, uh, Love Your Way, yeah. which, which I, you know, in my, in my review, and I kind of gave it like a Santana vibe. I mean, there's, there's a, you know, some playing in there that just reminds me of, of Carlos, you know, you know, just me growing up listening to all those different things, you know, with my parents, you know, in the car as a kid, remembering, oh man, you know, there's a Santana and, you know some of those guys right there, and that's that's another side that you that you bring into this album as well. Well, now that you know, yeah, that's a great song, and and, and I want to give I want to give Terry credit. The main solo in that song was from the main demo that I heard. That song been sitting around for a few years, right. and Terry actually played that solo, and he played it so well that I I said I'm not we're not getting rid of that guitar solo. Right. And so I did the I did the front solo and the very end solo of that song. Um. And the other thing that's weird about that is Terry played a solo on a Fender Stratocaster at the EMG pickups from like 1977 through a Line 6 amp, I think. And I played my solo with a Gibson Les Paul through a Randall 412. And the tones, you can't even tell the difference in the time that it was recorded or the fact it was two completely different guitars and amps. I wouldn't even have known it until you just yeah. said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so it was really crazy, man. Just there, it's like you said, everything happens for a reason when it happens, and certain things come into your life at certain times. And, right. And, uh, you know, God bless Terry Withrow and his patience and his belief in me um, and everything that he has done for me in this process and has continued to do for me because we're in this now. We've got, we've got a game plan together. We've got three albums. We're getting done. The first album's out. We haven't really pushed the first album. A lot of hardcore fans have bought it. Other people picked it up as well, but you know I'm getting ready to start the promotion for it actually here in the next couple of weeks, right. and then right on the heels of that, you know, the end of October we're going to be releasing uh, the second album, which right now tentatively is titled "The Devil's Juice." Nice. And um, and this album's completely different than the first one. It's still got a lot of blues tinge to it, but there's there's other aspects about it, man, that are just you know, and that's what's so cool about it. So far, we haven't duplicated ourselves. Um, and in the third album, hopefully it'll be completely different from these two. So that's great to have a chance to, you know, to hear different sides. I mean, three different albums, and and, and I, that has to really help you as an artist too. I mean, to be able to express yourself and to be able to bring, you know, some of the different elements into it. You know, what what is that like? You know, say you're, you know, you're going into to write this album. You know, uh, you know, the new album in the key of blue. Any of those? What, what is that like for you as a as an artist, as a writer, to go in and 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 write this different style of music after, you know, you know, coming in with the hydrogen stuff and and uh, you know even the last hydrogen album, which was which was you know heavier, which was which I love, you well, know that. Yeah, it was. It, it's all really weird to be honest with you. Hydrogen before this last album was always a, a daunting task. Um, right. pressure, pressure filled, uh, filled. I, I never really, you know, I didn't really, to be honest with you, I didn't really enjoy writing for hydrogen that much. Now that I look back on it, because it was so pressure packed and, and, um, you know, uh, almost an estranged kind of situation because I would write a lot of the stuff on my own that I would take it to the band. And that wasn't the problem. I mean, those guys, you know, they bring in things too, and we'd put them together, and we'd rehearse them out. But you know, it was hard. It was difficult to get Julie in a room with us because she didn't like to write that way. She liked to, she liked to get the song, um, go back, come up with her ideas, come back to us, and say, "Okay, can we do this, this, and this?" And we'd do it. Then we just put a room mic in the room and record it. And then she would go off and come up with her stuff. And then we may not hear her vocal melody or anything for two weeks, three weeks. And so um, when we did the last EP with her, Break the Chains, that was the most strenuous of all. Uh, I was trying to be more friendly to her as far as the style she wanted. And I was writing out of context the way that I wanted to do. So I've got these really ultra heavy riffs, these heavy ideas, and I'm having to pop them up. Right. And 
I didn't dig that, and 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 but it still came out good. I mean, she sang great. That girl always sings great, and that was the end of it. But we hit redemption. It was a completely different situation. It's a whole band in a room together, and we're just busting out ideas. So it was unbelievable, um, and that worked out really well. And then this idea, this whole situation, once Terry and I decided we were going to do it, man, that's been October of fifteen. My floodgates have not stopped since then. I, I, I just put together a new song last week. I put together a new song last night. I've got two more song ideas I'm ready to do. We've all, we're already up to like 15 songs for demos for this album. That's incredible. And so, and I think the freedom, I think the lack of pressure, being able to do what I really want to do right. versus what I think somebody else might like or 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 anything like that, you know, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and blame her for all that. There's also, you know, cause she's not to blame for it, but there's also pressure from the fans, you know, I mean, right. Every we put out was successful. I mean, private sessions got album of the year on a lot of sites right. in 2012. And so it was kind of tough to follow that up. And, and then, you know, to, to beat it all, she only wanted to do an EP and it was a struggle to get her in to do five songs. And, and, um, and just because she had changed years in life, she had changed the way she wanted to do things. And so, you know, but once all that was, once all that was away and I could work on me, it has just been flawless. And, and my, the way I look at it when I go into write for these albums, like with, um, within the key of blue, there was no thought process. We just wrote, it's like, Oh wow. And this new album again, there is no process. There is just, it's just right. And I'm blessed to be surrounded by incredible people, whether it be Terry Withrow, right. Joe Cotton on keyboards, which I call the mad scientist. Um, you know, it's like, it's like every time we get together to write, I, I want to put little vials of stuff with smoke coming out of it because it, <laughs> you know, he's, he's just so insanely brilliant. Um, right. You know, and then I've got uh, John Carlino on drums, and I've got my brother Jeff Boggs on guitar if I need him for anything, you know. Right. Uh, you know, he's there. And then I got uh, J.P. Boggs on bass, and, and you know, who who has great ideas and, and good thoughts. So I'm just blessed to have all these people around me. And so right now, it's such a freedom. I feel so free in the whole thing that the description is I'm not having to think, which is the biggest plus of all. And that is that's it's great to hear that from me because I you know I know some of the things you know with us being friends just you know that you went through and and right. and, and I know you you're having that freedom as an artist right now and 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 you know what Jeff too it 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 really comes across in the material too you could tell that you're relaxed and you know and that comes across with your playing as well I mean you know on that you know on the blues album and and you know the hydrogen album like I said it's 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 like the uh, it's the best I've heard you play, and, and and it just feels like it's getting better and better and better, and and I guess that has a lot to do with it, with the, uh, you know, with the lack of you know the heavy pressure and, you know, being able to just be an artist. Well, you know, and it does, man. I mean, it, it really does. And and the biggest thing is like like with hydrogen, you know, we were geared a lot towards success of radio and 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 the radio song, and you know, Michael Wagner who's producing this is like, ah, you got you can't go over three and a half minutes and. Once, once that was heard, that was a locked-in formula, and Julie didn't like a whole lot of guitar soloing. You know, you got time to solo in a song, but it was kind of like in and out. And right. and so, you know, and then I did Urkai, and uh, with Jeff Boggs and Keith Ramsey, and it was me and Jeff playing guitar. So we split duties, and and there's nothing I love more than playing with that guy. Right. But you know, it's still a limited situation uh, because there's no way in hell. That you can hold a monster like Jeff Boggs down, he needs to be heard, and that's just the way that is because he's brilliant. Right. And uh, right. then the audio porn, audio porn, we're back geared toward more like radio stuff. And so, you know, uh, I think I did some of my best work up until that point was on the Midnight Confessions album. And then when the Blues album came up, this is the first time in my entire life I've just ripped open and gone. I mean, you know. We're sitting there writing songs, and all of a sudden we look up, like, oh, man, that's a three-minute solo section. And Terry goes, yeah, it should be four. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm like, oh, okay, well, you know. <laughs> and so, you know, so it worked out. It all worked out for the best, and, and I can't complain about, about any of it at all. Um, and I think a lot of the reason why this, you know, why you say this is the best you've heard me play, because 
I honestly feel like this is the first time in my life I've had freedom to play. And I, I, I like I said, I, I uh, you know, hearing what you're doing right now, and, and and the people haven't even heard half the stuff. There's things that, that never made the album, you know, that yeah. I had the chance to hear. And, uh, you know, like you said, you got 15 songs ready already. And and I always tell you, too, is is the guys, you know, that you work with, you know, Boggsy, Cartolino, you know, you know Terry. It's 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 amazing to me that you can hear musicians that are that great, and you just wonder, man, how how come these guys aren't more popular than they are? What is the you know the thing that that kind of holds everybody back? And I really think that it's just a fact that there's so many you know artists out there that are just not promoted well. It's kind of like a, a a dead thing. Like people just say, hey, you know, who cares about these guys? And, and and it's it's really a shame because this is music that 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 in my eyes needs to be heard. Well, and I agree with you on almost every aspect of that. I mean, you know, there there a lot of that is just a hundred percent true. And um, you know, I, I've been fortunate enough to hit the European market um, pretty hard and pretty heavy, and I've got tons of fans over there. And it's you know, it's just really amazing um, to get messages from those people. Uh, quite often uh, i got one from a guy the other day i got a friend request on facebook and you know and i, I accepted it and, and uh he said hey i met you in france um back on i can't remember what tour it was i think it was the uh i think it was the beginning of the deadly passions tour and he met he said i met you in marseilles and i go oh i remember that night it was so bitter cold um Right. You know, you're you're in the south of France, which is like the equivalent of Florida for us. It's supposed to be warm, and it was freezing. Um, right. And and you know, I, I get messages like that all the time. People sending me stuff. So you know, we're reaching people. It may not be necessarily in America, right? Uh, but we do reach quite a bit of people. Uh, hydrogen's very popular in Europe. I, let's say hydrogen was very popular in Europe. Uh, I really don't know how to gauge that now um, because I haven't been over there in a while. Right. But you know, there's people, there's people hearing about it, but you know, the internet's been such a great thing and such a bad thing all at the same time. Great. Um, I think that it, I think that clearly affects the situation. Um, but hey, you know, my legacy is what my legacy is, and my legacy is going to be what it is when I'm done. And I'm not going to be done until I'm done. I mean, until you're putting me in the ground, right. I'm <laughs> going to keep going. <laughs> It really is, uh, you know, us as being friends, uh, anybody that's listening out there, I don't know a harder worker than this guy. We always laugh about some of the things we, when he said uh, he's got his hands involved in, in way too much shit. And that's really, uh, that, that's really, what, uh, when I look at you, I think about that. What is he up to now? And I, I think it's cool that it comes across, like, you know, in the music like that because, Every day I hear something different from you, or I get like a, a little message that's like, "Here's a sound clip. This is just like you know two minutes of it, and uh, it's not even the name of the song, but it's just uh, it's just really cool to see that you're working like that. And and what it comes across to me is is I love people with passion, and, and that's what you have, brother. You really do. Well, I was born with it. I was blessed with it. Um that passion was kind of instilled in me from a very, very young kid. And I'm talking it probably days old. I mean, when I was born first few years, I lived with my grandparents. Um, and in that house, there was always music. Right. And, you know, always music, man. I mean, always music. And, and, and if the stereo wasn't on, the TV was on, uh, Lawrence Welk. We watched everything from Lawrence Welk, <coughs> to Hee Haw, uh, um, Wolfman Jack, you know, on Friday nights, Saturday night, you know, and all that. I mean, they, they watched everything. Um, so that was, and my mom was a big part of that too, cause she encouraged it. And, and, uh, you know, so that, that's where the passion comes from. It's always been there. Um, it'll always be there, you know, music, music is the, um, transparency that everybody needs it's the thing 
that every person in the world, whether you can understand each other or not verbally, you understand when you hear the music. Um, every human being is pretty much made the same. Uh, some people move to metal. Some people move to blues. Some people move to rap. Some people move to country. Some people move to R&B. Yada, 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 so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, every one of us moves to a beat. Right. And, and you know, that beat attracts people, which allows the rest of the music, the lyrics, the melody, the the strings, you know, whether it be a quartet of strings like violins and stuff like that, or we got horns or you got a guitar or what, whatever. It's just something that relates to everyone. And it's too bad that, you know, you can't put some of the stuff down that goes on now, the hatred and everything, and just let music do the talking. You know, it's like Aerosmith, let the music do the talking. Right. You know, because it would be so great. But, you know, it is a passion with me, and I, you know that, and I know it's a passion with you. I mean, we've spent countless hours uh, <laughs> talking about all this over, over, over the last uh, year, a little more than a year now. Right. And, you know, so it, it is there. And, and I let that all translate, you know, and that's why I'm saying right now it's not a uh, – this is not an issue for me writing. It's not, it's not an effort. It's literally not an effort. If I was to look at somebody in the face – and go, oh, you don't know how hard I am working to write these songs right now, I would be a complete freaking liar. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not working hard because it just it just comes out. I mean, the track I sent you a couple weeks ago, you're talking about that two minute clip. Right. Man, you know, that song that song literally fell together in a period of about twenty minutes. Lyrics, melody, music, everything. <laughs> You have a lot of that happen too, because I know you know, you know the way you guys work, and that's that's another thing I bring up is 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 work ethic is uh, you know when when you have it rolling, and you're you know and you're in the uh, you know you're in the zone, and that's where you're at right now, definitely in the zone. Yeah, I'm in a, huh, I'm in a big zone. It, it's a it's a it's a very very wide open piece of real estate at the current time you know and that that'll shut at some point um i've had it happen before um you know when we started going back in time when we started working on the hydrogen record deadly passions uh I remember after bombshell was over we're doing the tour and the whole time we're on tour i'm like oh my god man i have no ideas i go to sound check and i couldn't i couldn't put two notes together that sounded good right. and you know and you know, of course, you can play the songs you already have, but I'm sitting there trying to come up with ideas. I'm like, God, man, what's going on? And, and we got done with the first... What did we get done? We got done with... Uh, man, I think we finished the entire Bombshell World, World Tour. I think it's when we came back. we just come back from Europe. And the very first song... I mean, we, we, I, you know, we took a couple weeks off, and we all got together for rehearsals. The very first rehearsal, man, Silent Animation came out. Right. And we all kind of looked at each other. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> and then after that, uh, Deadly Passions came out. And um, It's Your Life came out. Um, <laughs> so it was ridiculous, man. It just started flowing again. Right. And so, yeah, but I went through a period there, probably about a year, that I couldn't put two things together. And then, you know, everything was kind of normal the rest of the time. And then once all this process started, man, it's like the gates just, they didn't even open. They just fell off the hinges. <laughs> that is, it's its great to hear, though. I mean, it's great to hear, you know, when I get to chat to, you know, a, with a musician and not only a musician, a friend, too, just to be able to, to hear, like, the, you know, the inside stories about how this stuff goes on and how it's, it's written. And most people don't get a chance to, you know, to... to actually get involved with the process and you look at you, you look at that at, uh, at the songs differently you look at the musicians differently you know when you hear it live and you hear it you know on album you know and when i listen to this stuff that you gave me before it hit the album and i listen to it again it's it kind of brings a smile to my face to say Man, i remember when he sent me that when it was just like a, a you know a two-minute clip just like something that he put together and it's it's great to hear that come together i, I think i take you know, I appreciate it a little bit more, you know, than well, uh, than normal. It, it is, an, it, it, you know, a lot of people don't understand, well, the majority of people don't understand the process uh, 
of how songs go together, you know, and what all what what all uh, uh, an individual goes through writing it. I mean, in my situation, I normally demo all the songs completely or a major section of it, and then I send it off to everybody. And everybody listens to it, you know, and then we'll go in and lay it down. But the thing that always gets me is Cardellino will come in the door and he'll start playing something and just his playing because john is so um dialed in right to me i mean personally our our connection musically is pretty stupid <laughs> and he dialed into me and then he'll bring in ideas and i'll be like oh what is that he goes i thought it'd be really cool right here if we would blah 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 and then we end up trying it and it's just like i just look at him i'm just like wow man you just you just took a really good song and just really kicked it in the butt right you know and um <laughs> And, and the same goes with these other guys. I mean, Terry, Terry's full of ideas. He's, uh, he's kind of like me. Neither one of us really sleep very well at night because our brains don't shut off. I mean, right. and it's gotten so bad for him that he's had to take up oil painting and he doesn't even start it till like one in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but he's really good at it too. It's a scary situation. I'm like, damn, man, where'd right. you learn how to do that? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Joe Cottle, the mad scientist, he doesn't. It, it, we're not even gonna talk about Joe because Joe don't even know what he's doing. He just he just does it, huh? Dude, he just does it. He looks at it and goes, "What? How, how's that?" And we all just kind of look at him and go, "Uh, yeah." Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so so you know, but I'm surrounded by these people, and and every now and then, um, we just did the sessions a couple weeks ago when when John was in tracking. And Joe came up the keyboard part of one of the songs, and I just I left the room shaking my head. I'm like, I'm like I've been living with that song for two months now, and I did, I never ever 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 heard anything close to what he just came up with, and that's amazing. Right. He's like, uh, it's like a modern day, very well kept secret that that he is like he's related to John Lord. <laughs> Yeah. That's an exceptional compliment, man. No doubt. Oh my God. He's amazing, man. He's just amazing. But yeah, putting songs together, uh, to me, it's a treat of a lifetime. The just absolute treat of a lifetime to be able to put things together and then have people like it, people buy it, people send you emails. Man, you don't understand what this record does to me, um, what your playing's meant to me. I had one guy... Um, email me back over the winter and said you have no idea how well you are thought of and how many people hold you in high esteem as a guitar player in spain that's great i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> you know and so it, it, it all makes a big deal so all those all those hours of putting things together and you thinking it's painstaking you know and as a as a writer and and working things out and, you know, coming up with those ideas. Um, and then you hear somebody say something like that. And then you go back and think about all those things that you did again. And you're like, wow, man, that's just amazing. Right. And it's, uh, you know, and it's just, it's just getting better too. I mean, you know, the more I listen to, you know, different things too is, you know, I remember when, you know, when we first met, it was, uh, you know, it was through Johnny Guard, John Guard. Yeah. You know, and the gods, you know, and, and, and he's really the one that got this whole train rolling. Oh, and, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. I thank him all the time. I mean, you know, for, uh, you know, for hooking us up and, you know, being able to get the, get a chance to hear this music. I mean, that, you know, I always tell you guys, I said, where the hell did I, did all this come from? I mean, it's just like, it's really nonstop. It's, it's, hey, you know, I'm getting hit with a hydrogen song. Hey, now there's a blues album and then now another blues album coming out. And, yeah. uh. And that doesn't even, you know, we haven't even tapped into the acoustic thing that you do. You know, uh, you know, the shows, I mean, with, uh, with Erica on vocals and, you know, and, and how about you as a vocalist as well? I mean, you know, that's a little different side of you as well. Yeah, you know, I, I, I didn't even start doing the vocal thing. I did uh, my, first, my first track I ever did vocally um, that actually got some highlight. I mean, you know. Who in the hell is going to get a chance to showcase vocals when you're sitting in a band with Julie Westlake? Right. I mean, seriously, man. <laughs> nobody wants to hear anything else. You know, right. it's just like, good Lord. Um, and then 
you know, and I say that because her voice is just so freaking good. Right. And, you know, so you sit there and think about that. And then, and then Garda came to me um, and said, hey, man, I'd really like for you to do a uh, tribute song for Eric Moore for a tribute album. I was like, oh, okay. And he goes, what would you like to do? I said, got to keep running. He goes, oh, somebody else is already doing it. I go, I don't care. That's what I'm doing. Right. You know, I'm, I'll do it. And if you don't like it, then you don't have to use it. But I'm not wasting my time on anything else. Right. So I got to get the card of Lena. We tracked Gotta Keep a Run. And we did it. You know, we modernized it a little bit. And, and that was my first lead vocal ever. Um, and then after that, I hadn't done any lead vocals on anything again. And then after that, I got the bright idea to do the Kiss tribute. Right. And we were looking for vocalists for Gene Simmons and Mark Carlisle who was in a tribute with me, said, man, why don't you try singing it? And I was like, all right, I'll try singing it. So we did Parasite, and he looked at me, and he goes, that's it, you're singing it all. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, all right, man. So, so we did that. So then I started thinking, huh, and didn't think any more about it for a while, and then, uh, then everything went down, and me and Terry started talking about the blues album. And so, you know, he's the one that said, you're going to sing. He goes, you're singing. We're not getting another singer. I'm like, okay. So... Right. Yeah, so that's worked out, and doing the acoustic thing with Eric has worked out a lot, too, because it's given me a chance to sing and build some confidence of, you know, in our acoustic show, we do a couple of originals, but we do a lot of covers. We cover everything from old Jefferson Airplane back in the 60s all the way up to today, all the way up to brand new modern stuff, and right. uh, what we play are not the standards that people normally hear, like, you know, somebody goes, I'll play some Eagles. I'll be damned if I'm going to be playing Peaceful, Easy Feeling. We do those shoes. Right, right. No, and and uh, you know, so we go through and pick out songs that people won't expect, and and um, you know, how many people you know play Jailbreak from Thin Lizzy on acoustic? Right. <laughs> you know, me and Boggs, right. they absolutely tear that up, and then right after Jailbreak, we'll turn around and we'll do Johnny Cash. I mean, how often does that happen? <laughs> right. <You know? laughs> Never happens. <laughs> You know, so we do that. And we stay quite busy. We're as busy as we want to be. Let's put it to you that way. Um, right. We, we got a show tomorrow, actually, and then we don't have a show for a couple weekends. Um, but you know, and that's good because I'm I'm busy working on this album and you know shooting videos. I mean, every day has been crazy and right. got to shoot got to shoot a video with just a beautiful girl, beautiful personality, beautiful girl to look at. Uh, Yvette Leanne Reimer, um, just stunning. And, you know, she made a video uh, really turn out really well with her enthusiasm and, and you know, her willingness. And so that that's turned out really well. She's kind of like the – she's like the, the Westlake chick now. She's the girl in the back of the cover. She's the girl in the video. She's going to be the girl in all the videos for this record. So, you know, we've made like a little package deal there. But, you cool. know, man, it's just – I continue to look around and just – smile at what i've been blessed with and what has been surrounding me uh you know and that includes yourself i mean you know uh becoming friends with you and going up to your place and spending time and doing some of the things we've done and talk to some of the people we've talked to dude it's just life's good i have no complaints <laughs> i totally agree man it's been a it's, it's been a blessing for me as well i mean to you know to be not only you know starting the business you know, in the record label and things that, you know, that we've done. But it's the fact that, you know, when that started, I never expected, you know, to see that be such a part of my life. I mean, it, it really has become, I mean, it's a, it's a passion. And, and, and it's like, like you just said, you know, I smile when somebody says rock in the fast lane or somebody says RFL records, because I think, man, this is, this is really what I want to do. You know, these are the people that I want to be around, and and with the fast lane stuff, like with this interview, I always say to the you know to the artists that I speak to is is it's my chance to give back. Yeah. The 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 years of my life, you know, that I look back and and all the great times, and I think it's it's a great life that I've been blessed with. The music has been such a part of it, and for artists that that, that I've been listening to since the you know, the 80s when I was coming up through high school and even back in the 70s, you know, and and, and just it, it touches so many different things in my life. And, and it's just like, you know, when you got me involved, you know, with the with the label and we started, you know, doing some of the things that we're doing and and I got to listen to you, 
you know, you know, with the gods and and uh, you know the Kiss album. I got to review things like that. It's just a, it really is, man. I I I thank you so much, man, for giving me the opportunity to be a part of what you're doing, and and I, I you know, it's a blessing, and that's why, you know, anything you need from me, you know, I'm here for you, brother. Well, I appreciate it, man, and all that goes likewise for me too. It's just. You know, this is a drug. This right. is a this is this is without a doubt an addiction. But it's an addiction. It's a, it's an addiction that's been created out of passion. Right. And there's a huge difference there. Right. You know. Um. So you know, I think it's part of something that would that you know the people that we're fortunate enough to talk with, uh, and deal with, um, even the ones who 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 are a little too tied up in themselves. Um, right. Still, you have to understand that, that there's a passion with the music, which is what's driven him to that point. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, and you got the Black Knots and Jerry and Greg and those guys over there, uh, part of RFL uh, from Huntington, West Virginia. God, man, freaking passion personified. Agreed. And, you know, then you, got, then you got Tony, you know, Anthony Leon and those guys up there in Pittsburgh, you know, kicking out some passionate stuff and. And uh, I wanted to give a shout out to to Justin, the drummer in Silk Nine. Lord have mercy. Um, the kid's boy, amazing. <laughs> he's amazing. You know, oh yeah. So you know, it's it's just a passion built thing, and and that's what that's what goes. You know, and you've got people in the business that have been there for a long time, be it Michael Shanker, Tony Iommi, Ozzy Osbourne, Biff Byford, and Paul Quinn from Saxon, right. uh, Phil Mogg. Uh, and Andy Parker, uh, Paul Raymond, who are three of the old guys from UFO that are still doing it. Right. Um, you know, and, and some other people, you know, if Ronnie James Dio is still alive, he'd still be out there. I mean, ah. Right. You know, uh, and all the things you listen to, you know, and, and the guys, you know, all the way up to the new stuff. You know, and we got new metal, and, and it may not be everybody's cup of tea, but, you know, in this moment... And then you got some some winery dogs, which is everything from progressive to blues to jazz to to you know. So and all those people, these are people who've been in business for years. You don't think they've been in the years for the money, do you? Exactly. No, they're in the business for the money, but the passion is what keeps them there, and and that's why we all smile, you know. And that's why that's why you got uh, uh, you know trucks out there playing guitar still after his stint with the Allman Brothers and Derek Trucks and doing his thing, you know, and and, right. and still out touring and, and Joe Bonamassa and Glenn Hughes. We could go on for days, right. you know. Right. And pe people just don't understand. Those people, they were bitten by the bug just like you and I. Exactly. Exactly. You so, couldn't put it any better. You know, you and, and better. God bless every single one of them because – those people on a nightly basis, when they step on that stage to play in front of, I don't care if they play in front of 1,500 or 15,000 or 100,000, they're affecting every one of those lives in a positive manner. And when those right. people go home, they're just like, ah, oh, it's like the world's right again, even if it's just for a brief period of time. That's right. I mean, you couldn't put it any better, brother. I mean, that really is, uh, that's really what it does. I mean, it, it you know, if people really look at the, you know, how really simple that really is right there and, and see how much it needs to be appreciated. And it really, it really needs to start coming back, you know, especially here in the U.S. I mean, everybody that that, that I talk to, you know, we, we start to see, you know, the, even the artists are seeing that, you know, we're starting to see the younger generation come back because people need something to cling on to now. We need, you know, positive you know, uh, influences in our lives, and, and, and I'm hoping to see the music, you know, makes that influence. And it, it's, to all the artists out there, you know, anybody that's listening to this, even if you, you've you played one note, you just started to pick up a guitar, and, you know, you started to, uh, you know, get involved with a local band, uh, national bands, you know, guys have been playing for a long time, you know, like Jeff said, it, it means so much. It's a, it's a positive expression, um... You know, you know, I love our local guys. I, I say that all the time. You know, I uh, I totally back the scene, and and it's just something that that even if you don't like the music, you got to appreciate the people because that's really what it's about. And I know that side doesn't get touched enough. And you know, 
I'm just hoping that you know that we could be you know even just a little part of that, and and, and guys like you, Jeff. I mean, you know, the guy that's a has a ton of spirit, a ton of emotion, a guy that, that gives so much back, you know. And, and and I really appreciate what you do, my friend. Well, I, I appreciate you saying that, and likewise, you're you know you're in a position to bring it to hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions, with with the website. And you know, we're not talking about the label; we're talking about the blog and everything else, you know, and, and that, that means a lot, man, because there's people, there, there's, there's somebody out there and there's more than just one, but there's somebody out there who didn't hear about X, Y, and Z. And they heard about it strictly because they're a fan of your site and that's where they heard it at. So if it wasn't for, you know, rocking the fast lane, they would have heard that news. People wouldn't know who, you know, there might be five out of ten people who listen to this interview that don't know who I am. But now they do know who I am. So everything's a positive, man. You're, you're, you're tapping into a um, conduit of just pure, unadulterated, high energy uh, that is it's all good. So – you know, and that's what they get from stuff like this, and and that's what everybody out there should understand. You know, uh, musicians don't don't really have time to be catty. They they don't have time to be out there pissing and moaning each other like Ian Vay and Joe Lynn Turner are right now. Right. Um, you know, uh, even though what Joe Lynn Turner said about everything was absolutely true, you know, let's not focus on ourselves and on that because at the end of the day, it's about the fans because the fans are the ones who get affected by it. Also. If you're going to be a douche, you're going to hurt a fan. Right. You know, you're right. going to hurt somebody who really depended on your emotional delivery to bring them happiness. And so if right. you're going to be doing that, then it's just kind of like, ah, man. You know, it's like Joe out there kind of pissing and moaning because Richie Blackmore doesn't want to get a, 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 a real rainbow lineup together to do his shows. Well, guess what? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. All you're doing is looking like an idiot. Right, exactly. They're going to do you know, what they want to do, and that's it. That's not what this music is about. Right. You know, those who want to go see Richie in that lineup will go see him. And from what I'm seeing from the crowds, it's tens of thousands of people. And, exactly, exactly. You know, and, 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 and just go on down the road, you know, and, and, and do stuff like that. So in a long, long story short, you know, uh, it was like last summer. Paul Stanley and Dee Snyder pissing and moaning each other. I mean, you know, really two guys who are loaded beyond belief. Does anybody take this serious? Right. You know, come on, guys. It's you, You've both made your mark. You both do what you do, and you do it well. And at the end of the day, the fans are the ones that are hurt by actions like that. And, you know, I'm just not going to go there. I've had people in bands with me before that have gone there, and I just I don't approve of it. I don't necessarily agree with what people do, but I tend to keep that very quiet. I mean, when do you ever see me on social media say something negative about things like that? never right i agree you know, it doesn't need to be it doesn't need to be music. on there yeah it doesn't you're absolutely right the music is all about what it is i don't care if you're a fan of king diamond i don't care if you're a fan of abba all that music means something to somebody and just stay out of their way and let them enjoy life right right agree now how about uh how about I'm any... sitting here supporting Abba. Don't anybody no, no. give me crap. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed on that, brother. Oh man. Hey, uh, last question. Uh, you know, I have yeah. uh, I have something that uh, you know I asked a lot of the artists, and and you know, looking at at your career, you know, mm-hmm. if you were to look back, you know, on everything that you've done, and and up until what you're doing right now. What do you want your, your your legacy to be? What do you want Jeff Westlake's legacy to be uh, as a musician? Uh, I just want my legacy to be somebody who touched people, who 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 um, played music, wrote songs to the best of my ability, um, played the best guitar, whether it's rhythm or lead. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's electric or acoustic. None of that stuff matters. It's just did the best I could. And at the end of the day, when somebody goes, 
what did you think about in the key of blue and that person knows who I am and they're a fan. I, I just want, I want those people to be able to go, Oh man, that was great. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say the album's great because I'm never going to be satisfied with what I do, but for the fans, for the people who, who spend money on me and spend money with me and, and support me no matter where they're at in the world, I want them to close their eyes at night um, having experienced something good and maybe I could take them someplace for five minutes or for 55 minutes for an entire album and made them feel good about life, made them feel good about themselves and put a smile on their face. If I can do that and that can be my legacy, I'm a happy guy. That's, that's, that's perfectly put. I mean, that's, that's what, uh, you know that's what you want for the fans, and it's it, like I said, it comes across in your music and, and and your dedication, and and we as fans definitely appreciate it. And anybody well, anybody that's out there, you know, looking to get, you know, two two albums that I recommend is is a uh, Hydrogen's new album, um, Redemption, it's, which is incredible. I mean, it's it's Jeff, Erica. I mean, on, on vocals, you know, taking over the reins as lead vocalist, does absolutely fantastic job. Uh, get out there and check that out. Get out there and check out uh, Jeff Westlake's In the Key of Blue. I mean, it, it's out there now. Um, the album's incredible. If you if you like blues rock, if you like blues, if you like any type of, of rock and roll, that album just, it, it touches a, a, a lot of sides. It, it's a very enjoyable listen. Um, you know, elements of Gary Moore, Dave Manichetti, Carlos Santana, ZZ Top. You know, this guy's got it all in... Uh, Jeff, I just want to tell. I want to say thanks for uh, you know sitting down and 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 chatting with me for for a little while here. It's always good to always good to talk to you, man. I know we talk a lot, but like I said, we don't have, actually have a chance to sit down and talk, you know, in depth about you know some of the things that you're doing. And you know, I'm looking forward to the new stuff. I, mean, I can't wait to hear that new blues album. I know I'll I'll get to hear a little more snippets of it, you know, so I can let everybody know what's coming. But it's always great yeah. to talk to you, brother. Well, man, I appreciate the time. I appreciate you uh, opening up a platform for people to hear about me, hear what I do, um, and, and all the things that you've brought up um, to, uh, I want to say, to to Jeff Boggs, John Cardellino, Chris Sammons, and Erica Parrott, uh, Killer Hydrogen Record. Thanks to those guys. To Terry Withrow for doing everything he's done for me. Joe Cottle, John Cardellino. Um, J.P. Boggs um, and all the other guys that played on the first record. I mean, there's so many names. Uh, there's so many drummers. It's like wind-up monkeys. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, for, for all those people, you know, uh, my daughter Taylor for always supporting me. Um, you know, and and you and and uh, you know, especially you giving me a platform here and and you know and and doing the things that we've done over the last year and things are about to take off and, and continue doing. Um, and then of course to John guard, who was the conduit between me and you and who, who introduced us. But you know, it's, it's the same. You know, I'll go back to that last answer, the legacy, the legacy to me, if you put legacy up, you want to put up an equal sign and write smile out to the other side, because if that's what you can accomplish, okay. if that's what you can do for people, um, that's amazing. I mean, and the last thing I want to say is, I was at, I went to see Journey eh, about three weeks ago, and I went to see them first time I'd seen them since the early '80s. Uh, gosh, I don't remember what tour it was. I maybe the Escape tour was the last time right. that I saw them. That wasn't on DVD. But I'm gonna tell you what, man, that place was packed to the rafters, and it was tens of thousands of smiles. And I remember looking around when the, all the lights came up. Uh, on the last song as they were doing the big thing and it was just unbelievable to see all these I was like man they just touched the souls of about 11,000 people right so to me that's what it's all about hey I like to make money too <laughs> you know that's um, it <laughs> nothing wrong with that nobody hates it yeah money's a driven factor but for me right. you know it's those messages I get when I wake up in the morning from other places in the world telling me about what I mean to them as far as a play. I just want to tell you that I listened to this song today and it just, I just, I, I had to say something to you and I saw you on Facebook and blah, 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 blah. And those kinds of messages, man, 
I mean, are, are they're priceless. That's a priceless kind of thing to get. And so, you know, all I want to say is to all the musicians that listen to this and all the musicians that hear about this, if you're not taking that attitude, maybe you should reassess yourself. Because at the end of the day, if you're not touching the souls of the people you're trying to reach, you're failing. Well put, brother. Well put. Well put. And uh, so my br- no, go ahead. So, no, so that's that's it. You know, that's all. That's all I really have to say. Um, here in about two weeks, we're going to have Jeff Westlake Music dot com up. You can find me on Facebook at uh, Jeff Westlake, or you can find me playing my blues as well. It's a fan page, or not a fan page, but an arts page. I'm on Instagram in the key of blue. I'm on uh, Twitter as myself. I mean, you know, any way you want to find me. If you want to keep it simple and you want to contact me, you can go right through this website, and John will make sure that I get the message. I can guarantee you that. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I, you know, again, I want to say thanks, brother. Wrapping everything up, um, you know, Jeff Westlake, my one of my really good friends. Uh, this guy's a great musician. Get out there and, and listen to some of the stuff. Like I said, you know, uh, Hydrogen with uh, Redemption, which is, you know, their latest album. Uh, a fantastic album. I mean, it's heavy and, and melodic in all the right places. It, it, it touches so many sides. Um, in the Key of Blue, another, you know, I can't say enough. I mean, I, I enjoy both of them. You know, I, I listen regularly. Um, you know, it, it's just, uh, it, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. I'm I, I, you know. It's uh, and let's not forget, been so busy and so many things have been going on. Probably early '18, you're gonna be hearing an album from a band called Heaven's Ashes, and I guarantee you, you're not gonna to want to miss that one. We're looking forward to that. We're definitely that one, looking forward to that. That one's gonna be with a vengeance. There's a couple guys right there that, uh, you know. I'll let you say it, man, because you're, you know, you know those guys, you know, better than I do. But, man, that's some talent there. I'm telling you what, Chris Ricci on bass, myself on guitar, um, Mike Paradine kicking some skins. But, and that's all well and good. Those three names and those three guys are all well and good. But until you have heard the delivery and the voice of one Azrael St. Michael, you have no idea what you've been missing. I totally agree. He's uh, AZ's one of the best kept secrets out out there. I think as a as a vocalist and frontman. I mean, the guy's just uh, he's amazing. He really is amazing. And and uh, you know, having a chance to interview him, you know, I believe that was that was last August, which was amazing. That it was almost a year ago. But the guy just yeah. has so many different sides to him. And and man, the total passion too. He just he has a great voice. He's a great writer. Um, that dude, that dude he, he is probably honestly. Uh, he's probably. I can only say this about him. He's uh, he's the only person I, I personally know of. He's a, he's a close friend. Um, he's a he's a great bandmate. He's a great person to work with. He just oozes machismo. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, absolutely that that long blonde hair and that you know uh, he can't go to starbucks and get a coffee because they don't serve alcohol right you know, but, uh, so so you know uh you know those those kinds of things i've been to vegas with the boy a couple times and every time i leave vegas i'm like god now i gotta go on vacation <laughs> But dude, man, that's what you—that's what you want out of a front man, and and uh, like Jeff said, heaven's ashes. I mean, look for it. I mean, we'll be, we'll be tied up definitely in the middle of that. You'll be hearing both of us, and and you'll be hearing some uh, great guitar work and and some great musicianship out of those boys. Because I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to it, brother. I'm looking Absolutely, forward to it, my man. Absolutely, I'm looking forward to it. Well, bro, it is time to go feed the face. <laughs> that sounds about right, brother. All hey right, man, well, thanks for uh, you know, thanks for sitting with me again. You know, you know, we'll get this interview and I'll put it together and and uh, we'll get a nice presentation out there. You know that I'll do my best, make sure everything's pro and and uh, well, I appreciate it, brother. I really do. Thanks hey, for man. sitting with me. Been a great time, rocking fast lane, best best metal web zine on planet Earth. 
<laughs> Thanks, brother. All right, man. I'll talk to you soon. All right, bud. Have a good night. Thanks a lot, Jeff. All right. All right, brother. Take care, man. Bye-bye.